Compressors and vacuum pumps work to move gas molecules from areas of lower gas density at the inlet to areas of higher gas density at the exhaust. The only difference between the two machines is the way they're used. A compressor takes gas at atmospheric and pumps it to a higher pressure air receiver tank. A vacuum pump takes gas from a vacuum tank and pumps it to a higher pressure atmosphere at the exhaust. One question worth asking is, what is the best way to measure the pressure on the process served by compressors and vacuum pumps? For compressors, we very often use the pressure difference achieved to drive machinery or instruments. So the logical step is to take atmospheric pressure as the starting point and measure how high above this the pressure is increased. The force applied by compressed airline will be one kilogram per centimeter squared for each bar above atmospheric pressure. So what do we do for vacuum? Well, it depends on what the vacuum is being used for. When we use vacuum like a force, such as lifting, holding and forming applications, then we are in fact using the force of atmospheric air to do the work. When wood is held down by suction on a CNC table, we use the vacuum to remove the pressure below the workpiece, but it's the atmospheric air on the top which pushes the wood onto the table. And similarly, when we use vacuum to lift, it's atmospheric air which pushes the item onto the lifting arm. So, as with compressors, it makes perfect sense in this situation to use an instrument which measures the difference between atmospheric pressure and the pressure in the vacuum system. With bigger numbers, meaning a bigger differential to atmosphere, and as a result, a higher force on the workpiece. The differential units are referred to as gauge pressure, and they're characterized by the use of a negative or a minus sign, or the word vacuum. So 10 inches vacuum, or minus 300 millibar gauge, means 10 inches or 300 millibar less than atmospheric pressure. Often when we get to deeper vacuum levels, we're not interested in the pressure differential to atmosphere. Instead, we're evacuating air molecules in order to make a clean environment. So take the example of food processing. In this case, we're pumping gas out from a sealed chamber to remove air and microbes which could spoil the taste so that food will have a longer shelf life. We use a pressure measurement which indicates how much air there is left in the chamber, related to the perfect vacuum of zero air left. We call that point absolute zero, and we take measurements only in positive values, climbing from zero to one bar or 30 inches or 760 tor at atmosphere, and continuing up from there above atmospheric pressure. A third distinct but similar style of application for vacuum is creating the right conditions for a process. Drying is a good example of this. By reducing the pressure in a drying chamber, we can encourage water to evaporate and remove those evaporated vapors. Water will evaporate when local conditions are correct. We need not to consider the difference to atmospheric pressure with a gauge instrument. We're interested in holding the pressure at a fixed positive absolute pressure value.